Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and this is your detailed nationwide tropical update here, particularly focusing on the Coral Sea because we do have multiple systems and a forecast to cause uh, problems for areas into the Coral Sea over the next 14 days. If you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing and also a massive thank you to everybody that has been living a like and sharing the videos over the last couple of days. It is massively appreciated. But let's get stuck straight into the current picture right now with what is going on in the Coral Sea. As you can see, as we flick on the pressure forecast here or the pressure map, there is a lot of low pressure around, uh, particularly on Queensland side of things, but also with this deepening monsoon trough here running through the Coral Sea, connecting up with tropical low 14U, or now subtropical low 14U, which is racing off towards New Zealand, expected to clip the North Island late at night and bring some damaging to locally destructive wind gusts there. But that monsoon trough, or that low pressure trough that is running right through the Coral Sea has got multiple areas of low pressure beginning to spin itself up. This one is not a concern, but this one here, tropical low 17U, may actually become a tropical cyclone as we head out towards the weekend. You can also see lots of low pressure up here in towards northwestern WA and low pressure running through central parts of southwestern Queensland. Very warm temperatures are currently uh, in the mix of things in these parts of Australia. But let's touch on Tropical Low 17U right now and have a look at what it looks like on the satellite imagery. It doesn't look half bad actually, but you've really got to know what you're looking for here in this mess of cloud cover. So I'm going to roll forward and backwards the last one hour of satellite imagery and let's see if we can see a bit of rotation going on. So forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. Backwards. And when we go forwards, you can see we've got that little rotation coming through here and a little bit of weak rotation coming through back here, which means we've got some broad rotation occurring around this common area, which is where Tropical Low 17U is. And let's see if we can see that a little bit better now without the arrows. There you go. You can see there is that rotation now starting to come through. This means we've got a fully fledged Tropical Low right now, and it is on the way to for development. It's on the way to become a tropical cyclone. Now, conditions aren't overly favorable. They've got some high levels of wind shear into this part of the Coral Sea, as you can see with all of this wispy cloud stuff. It looks like a mess of cobwebs here in the northern parts of the Coral Sea, and that's indicative of high levels of wind shear. That's also pretty typical when we've got a strong monsoonal trough like this. Wind shear generally isn't that favourable, and storms tend to have a hard time getting out of the monsoon trough, and as a result, we're not expecting a strong system out of this, not to mention the fact that it's actually going to bypass Queensland and not really be a problem system for Queensland at all in the next couple of days. This really isn't a system worth worrying about right now. But let's anyway flick on the forecast and have a look at what this system is going to be doing. You can see because it is monsoonal in nature, we've got that skewed wind field, which means the northern side is going to be abnormally strong compared to the southern side. And that's good news for Queensland because Queensland is going to be looking at the southern side of this system here. Now, through tomorrow, we may see some strong wind gusts along Willis Island and through parts of the Coral Sea Islands Territory before another tropical low begins to develop towards the northwest of this system here through Friday and into Saturday. I talked about this in a Facebook post that I've made uh, just a few months moments ago up here and towards northern Queensland, we're going to have this second tropical low come down and begin interacting with this system here. The Bureau of Meteorology is yet to pick up on this system, but it's basically what we're looking at here is a strong tropical low embedded in a much broader area of low pressure associated with a monsoon, which means this system is going to remain monsoonal for the foreseeable future. And that's another bad sign for intensification. It means that this system is going to struggle to become independent. It's going to struggle to form its own cent strong center of low pressure, its own defined center of low pressure. And because the Bureau of Meteorology, if we think of this as being the low pressure system, and if we divide this up into towards four quadrants here, for a storm to be classified as a tropical cyclone by the Bureau of Meteorology, you need to have tropical cyclone force winds in at least three out of the four quadrants here. Even if it's just a little bit of coverage in each of the quadrants, you need to have a little bit of those cyclonic force winds. And because we're going to be talking about a monsoonal based system, which is going to be dominant on one side and weaker on another side, it's never going to meet these classifications, which means tropical cyclone intensification is is quite unlikely with this system, but it's going to be a bit like Tropical Cyclone Koji in the sense that whilst it may not become a tropical cyclone, it may still have tropical cyclone equivalent winds. How many times have I said tropical cyclone so far this video? Well, I think too many considering that this isn't going to become a tropical cyclone of concern for Queensland. Pushing the forecast modeling forward here, you can see between the major forecast models, we're looking at this system being very monsoonal throughout the weekend. And then it looks like some interesting things begin to happen. And this is best shown over on the AI forecast models, which we've been using quite a lot on this channel in the last couple of days, uh, kind of like I've got a new toy here because I've only just found out that these exist, but they are deadly accurate. They nailed Tropical Cyclone Koji, and that was their trial by fire. So as you can see, we're looking for these dots through here. And when we've got dots clumped close together, like we've got here on the forecast, that means that we've got high amounts of certainty on the forecast models. You can see a clump of dots up here from another tropical low pressure system. This is for Friday afternoon. As we continue to roll this out, you can see these clumps become a little bit more sporadic and a bit more widespread, and these clumps 
pumps down here spread out a little bit more. That means we've got some uncertainty in the forecast, but you can see a general trend with the forecast right now as is that these dots head out towards the east. And eventually, as you can see on the forecast models here, the low pressure system also moves out further and further into the Coral Sea before for some weird reason the eastern wave drags it back in, but I wouldn't take any notice of that. But between all the other major forecast models, we see this system get dragged further out into the Coral Sea until about the end of January. Now the forecast becomes very uncertain at the end of January here into the Coral Sea. And I'll touch on this and talk about it in the end of the forecast update, but there's definitely some big developments out here that I would like to touch on. So stick around to the end of the video and we'll have some information on that. But first, just before we get to that, I would like to talk about what impacts can we actually be expecting from Tropical Low 17U and the system behind it. Well, over the last couple of days, we've seen some pretty strong winds and some locally heavy falls up here into the Torres Strait and the far north of the Cape York Peninsula. Now, that is going to continue as another Tropical Low Pressure system begins developing, as we know, throughout the remainder of this weekend to this weekend. But with Tropical Low 17U now pulling away from Queensland and expected to head parallel to the Queensland coastline, but still remain far enough offshore, impacts are not expected to be that widespread or that significant at all. We do have a few showers coming into the far north Queensland coastline and some more thunderstorm development through the Cape York Peninsula is definitely expected as a result, not to mention the fact that another period of heavy rainfall and potentially strong wind gusts through the Torres Strait and the areas north of Weeper up to about Thursday Island on Cape York is still likely throughout the next couple of days, but uh, bar a few showers and maybe some strong winds through the winter Sundays in the central Queensland coastline, I really don't think that you're going to be able to tell that a tropical low is out into the Coral Sea. That's how weak this system is going to be and how insignificant it is going to be for Queensland. So just a classic watch but don't act sort of system here. Really nothing to be concerned about whatsoever and definitely not something that I'd be you know paying close attention to, particularly if you're not interested in all of the science and all of that hoo-ha behind tropical cyclone development like I like to go into in these videos. If you just want a yes or no answer as to whether or not you're going to be seeing impacts, you can switch off from the 17U coverage because it doesn't look like impacts are expected in the next five days and that's about as far out as a forecast goes with a higher degree of certainty in this situation here. Beyond that, the forecast is very uncertain, but even if this system does turn for Queensland, it's not going to be very very strong, and as such, impacts are expected to be pretty minimal at a worst-case scenario. Best-case scenario, there's no impacts whatsoever, so keep that in mind as well. And you can see maybe those impacts do arise in the form of a couple of showers and thunderstorms here and there, here and there but yeah, really nothing to be concerned about whatsoever here on the forecast models, and not something I'm worrying about at all at this point in time. Now, let's sh uh, shake things up a little bit and go over towards Western Australia, where we've got Tropical Low 16U, which is actually the remnants in part from Tropical Cyclone Koji. So this system has been kicking around for quite a while, and it's been on our radar for a long time as well. It's really been on the burner for quite a while. This system was, a couple of days ago, located here in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, adjacent to the Darwin coastline, and every major forecast model was calling for this to swing out into the Indian Ocean and then become a behemoth and slam the Pilbara coastline here, somewhere between Exmouth up to Broome, as likely a high range range uh, severe tropical cyclone category 4 even category 5 status was thrown around by a couple of forecast model runs that has since been quashed but we have seen a couple of recent developments in the last few hours here out into the Timor Sea and we're going to do the same thing again look for rotation into the lower levels here on the satellite imagery so I'm going to roll back the last hour of satellite imagery here and see if you can pick up a bit of rotation so going forwards going backwards going forwards going backwards going forwards going backwards you may be able to see it's a lot harder to tell than the rotation in tropical low 17U, but if you've got the eagle eye, you'll notice a little bit of rotation coming through here and very weak rotation on the back side of this system here, which means there is a broad and disorganized low pressure center somewhere where that L is. And if we cross-reference that with what the forecast models are saying, it does make sense. We're seeing this broad area of low pressure, very trophy in nature right now, because it doesn't really have a backside at all beginning to develop in this area here, just towards the south of Timor, uh, offshore from the Kimberley coastline. Now, this is expected to develop a little bit more and get its act together in the next 48 hours or so. It's got a little bit of work to do, that's for sure, to get itself up there, but conditions are now a lot more favorable for tropical cyclone or tropical low development, and it looks like by about Friday morning, this system will be well on its way to becoming a fully-fledged tropical cyclone, and that's the interesting thing about tropical low 16U now, is that it's actually expected to become a tropical cyclone by every single major forecast model, and chances are now definitely rising here for the Kimberley coastline of Western Australia to receive not just a Category 1 tropical cyclone impact, but potentially a significant one, and let me tell you why I 
believe that to be true? Well, first, we've got this developing low pressure system here in a very favorable environment. Low levels of wind shear, high sea surface temperatures. It's a small system which is going to make it susceptible to its environment, which keep in mind is favorable. So that is good news here. And with this system here moving through some more favorable conditions as we head down towards uh, Friday night into Saturday. Saturday is when it's expected to cross the coastline. It's also starting to trend a little bit further towards the south, this potential coastal crossing. And I'll touch on that in just a few seconds. I'll show you what I mean by that. That will give it a little bit more time over water. And it looks like by Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening, we may actually be looking at a Category 2, maybe even a Category 3 if things really work out for this system here. Put it this way, think back to Tropical Cyclone Haley. It could be pretty similar to that. That's what the major forecast models are suggesting right here with this tropical low development. It's interesting, that's for sure. I mean, the Icon model is definitely the best example of uh, having a bit of a crazy run at this system here. You can see the Icon's calling for a strong system to cross the coast around Curie Bay through Saturday night. The Axis is also generally a pretty unreliable forecast model to be using for tropical cyclone track especially, but it's still calling for that cyclone to go in towards the West Australian coastline here, up around the Wyndham and the Kununurra area. ECMWF as well has got a brief, weak tropical cyclone peak here. But yeah, I definitely think considering the conditions that tropical cyclone chances are now greater than 50-50 uh, with this system coming into the West Australian coastline and it's not a 0% chance that this comes in as a severe tropical cyclone now and it's about time that I show you what I mean by that. This is again a look at the AI forecast models but look at that we've got this clump of low pressure systems all very close together which means that we've got a high degree of certainty coming through here and this will likely get pulled together uh, over the next couple of days but as we continue to play this run forward you can see they continue to stay well put together and depending on how much time this system stays over the water for particularly if it stays over the water for a little bit longer and comes in Saturday afternoon as opposed to Saturday morning. It's going to have more time to intensify and some of those forecast models taking this system up towards Category 2 or Category 3 status here as observed by those orange colours here on this forecast. So uh, definitely around Derby, I'd be watching out right now. It's definitely still a watch but don't act situation for the north uh, western coast of WA here around Broome and Derby, but I would be watching this situation quite closely and checking back in with the forecast models every couple of hours here to see if there is changes or consistencies that you need to do need to be aware of. Now, keep in mind the cyclone code up here in Northwestern WA, some of the stricter cyclone codes that we have in Australia. They are no stranger powerful systems here. So category three tropical cyclones and below, they really don't worry them. So let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We're not looking at a category four or five. This is not going to be an apocalypse. You will be prepared for it if this does come through and making sure that you've got your tropical cyclone season preparations all down pat and put away. But definitely watch this space closely. Watch the forecast closely because if this does change, we do see some more consistency coming through. Then we we may be talking about a landfall around the Derby area as a relatively significant Category 2 uh, tropical cyclone. That's kind of the best guess right now. Of course, considering the fact that this is going to be a small system and wind shear is only borderline favourable in the next 48 hours, this could all fall flat on its face. So we do need to keep that in mind as well. But it's looking increasingly likely now with this reduction in wind shear and the fact that it's got very favourable conditions ahead of it, that this system here will go into the West Australian coastline, likely as a tropical cyclone, potentially even as a moderate or even a significant tropical cyclone. So we should be keeping close tabs on this situation over the next couple of days. Make sure you are remaining informed, that's for sure. And just panning things back out towards the Coral Sea, major forecast models are pretty keen on a very active monsoon burst in the first week of February. That may produce a strong tropical cyclone or two out into the Coral Sea, potentially even into the Gulf of Carpentaria. Long-range forecast modeling cannot for the life, it, life of it decide where tropical cyclone activity is going to develop. It could be somewhere around the Cape York Peninsula, could be somewhere out here around Vanuatu, could be somewhere in the middle, but generally speaking, a southerly motion is expected with these tropical low tracks, just given the current steering flows until it gets south of this line here, where it will then be pulled out towards the southeast. That's kind of the current situation that we have, depending on where this storm uh, complex develops, whether it's closer to the Cape York Peninsula, whether it's further out towards Vanuatu. A worst case scenario would be offshore from the Cape York Peninsula, but on the Coral Sea side, that would not be ideal. But again, we're looking very long range right now, so we're only looking at trends. And the fact that we are starting to see a bit of a trend here on forecast modeling here, again, with the AI forecast models, might much later on, you can see a couple of low pressure dots out here as we head out towards the 1st of February when this picture is. Uh, and then as you can see, as we push this forecast forward, that southeasterly motion kicks in and towards the end of the forecast here, the 3rd and the 4th of February, we've got some pretty dark colors here, reds and pinks, category four and five coming in towards Queensland. So this is something that we should be uh, not worrying about. We should be monitoring. Um, this is a long range trend right now. And normally I wouldn't be bringing up something like this, but when we've got maybe about 30 or 40% of the ensemble members calling for the exact same thing, 
it's kind of hard to ignore. So Queensland, this is definitely a situation that's worth you know checking back in on in about a week's time and seeing what is going to be coming through. But trust me, if we do see a tropical cyclone, particularly something coming from the Solomon Islands out here, we will have up to a week's notice for the Queensland coastline. So there is no point in preparations right now or panicking or worrying about this system, you will have more than enough time to get yourself ready for a tropical cyclone impact if it does come into the Queensland coastline. And again, what we're doing right now is looking at the long range trend. We're not looking at a forecast. This is not a forecast. This is purely a trend outlook, seeing what we're seeing on the longer range side of things. Uh, this is another interesting thing, day by day, tropical cyclone genesis chances. So you can see today and tomorrow high chances here across the WA coastline, as you would expect. Moderate chances out here into the Coral Sea as well from 17 US, you would expect. They decrease a little bit this week weekend, but you can see that second tropical low coming in to mop up the mess behind it. And you can see the chance doesn't really drop away. In fact, it begins to build as we get out towards the last couple of days of January out into the Coral Sea as that monsoon trough really does ramp up. And you can see another area into the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. So that trend is most certainly there. We've looked at more than one forecast model now here and the potential for tropical cyclone genesis or development out into the last couple of days of January or the first couple of days of February certainly does remain there. So make sure you do stay informed and make sure you do stay on top of the forecast models because chances are most certainly there they're a little bit more elevated than what they normally are even for this time of the year so keep that in mind so of course to sum it all up this is of no concern whatsoever to Queensland Western Australia I would be you know monitoring the situation quite closely the risk is definitely the highest over in the west up in the Kimberley coastline uh, but for Queensland this is just all watch and act type stuff watch the forecast closely and if you get placed under warnings or watches then make sure you do act upon those uh, in accordance to when they are released but that is going to do it for me though this afternoon. I do hope you've had a fantastic uh, start to your Wednesday. And if you have, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel as well. If you've enjoyed this update, go check out the Facebook page for regular and frequent and highly detailed updates over on these tropical cyclones as well. I'll have another write-up coming out uh, on these systems, both of them tomorrow as well. So make sure you do go and check that out. That is going to do it for me to this, uh, this afternoon. Yes, this afternoon. And I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.